Hi, aloha. Welcome to my, my live stream. My name is Master Paul and I'm so grateful that you're here today. It is Friday. It is the last day of the week and today is November 4. Curiously enough, I had the belief that today was the, the, the day for elections and we would have a new president by the end of tonight, but I was very surprised to find out we have four more days. So I'm not going to go down that road of communication today, but just wanted to let you know I was surprised and that's how I remembered today's date, November 4. Um, today we're going to be focusing on passing spiritual testing. What is spiritual testing? Why does it come to us? How does it come to us? And what we can do to pass the tests when they come. So it's going to be a very important day, one in which we can uh, start to recognize the ways in which the soul world communicates with us, the way in which the soul world lets us know that, hey, this is an opportunity to move through a blockage or it's an opportunity to suffer. It really depends on our perspective. One of the things that our beloved spiritual father, Lord Buddha, has said is that life is suffering. Now. I honestly don't know if Buddha said that. It could be simply something that uh, another human over the course of the last thousands of years spoke and then gave Buddha that uh, credit. But the message is that, that life, if not looking through the proper eyes, we can look at it as suffering. And we could change our perspective on it as possibly. So when we look at the question of what is spiritual testing. It is very often associated with what we would call suffering. It's very often associated with um, something that has been judged as pleasant or unpleasant. So I'm going to go into more detail in a little while, but I want to acknowledge everyone that's tuning in. So welcome Kayla Darling and family. Welcome Michelle and Nicole. Thank you for joining. Welcome Monica. Welcome uh, Nicole Sanders and Mary Morse. Welcome Kristen. Janet Bliss, welcome. And welcome Ari. Thank you all for joining. I see Linda Chelsea has jumped in there. Fridays are usually a little bit on the slow side. There's, um, <coughs> everybody is, what's it? It's uh, Pauhana. We call Pauhana, which is happy hour in Hawaii. That won't be for several more hours. But um, it's happy hour in other parts of the East Coast on a Friday. So tend to have a lesser <laughs> people showing up for this. And welcome Stephanie, Amy, and welcome Thomas. Thomas coming in from uh, Germany, so it's about 1 a.m. in the morning over there, so quite the night owl. Um, so good on you for showing up today. So let us connect heart to heart, soul to soul, and then we will move forward with today's wisdom teachings and blessings, because there will be a blessing for passing the spiritual testing uh, as we go through today, okay? We're going to put our hands together in soul light, soul service hand position, dropping our left hand in front of our heart center. Uh, close your eyes. Prepare to connect. They're all layers of the divine, the Tao, and the source. We love you, honor you, appreciate you, respect you. We are extremely grateful for the opportunity to be awoken to our understanding of your presence in every aspect of our life. We ask for forgiveness for being numb and unaware of your presence in each moment and how you are doing your best to guide us to move through and past our spiritual blockages so that we can purify to become a higher soul being. We thank you, all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, all committees in heaven. We thank you, all beings of light, masters, ascended masters, lamas, sifus, and gurus, saints, kahunas, Buddhas, bodhisattvas, angels, healing angels, and archangels, and our heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints. And we truly appreciate your service. We invite you all to be with us here today to assist us with this knowledge, wisdom, and blessings about spiritual testing and purification. We ask for your blessings in whatever way is most appropriate that we can gain the greatest values today as possible. Dear the Source Soul Song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes, 
We love you, honor you, respect you, bow down to you. We ask that you please turn on in all souls and all universes and offer a blessing to connect us heart to heart, soul to soul. Bless us throughout the entire hour to clear our spiritual blockages, to help us to purify. Bless us to align to the divine down source and to pass our spiritual testing. Let us chant together. For those that do not know the song, please close your eyes to receive. For those that do, please chant with me. Lula, lula, li. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Oh, I wash in Erling. Oh, I turn and lay. Wang Li Hing Rong. Her musher shang. Song I ping on her shed. Song I ping on her shed. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we've had some additional folks join us. So I'd like to welcome uh, Sarah Abernathy from Florida. Welcome, Sarah. Welcome, Bari. Welcome, Esther. <coughs> Kristen Strachan. Good to see you. Jessica and Carol Pico. Welcome, Elizabeth. Welcome, Eleanor. Uh, Mary Vasek. Welcome, Ali. And welcome, uh, Jaco. Good to see all of you. Thank you so much for joining. For those that have not already hit the share button, please do so. A few more people might say, ah, oh, I want to know how to pass spiritual testing. Might have some good insights. So welcome also Anne-Marie Harris and Vicki Gannon. Great to see you all. Vicki coming in from the UK, 1 a.m. in the morning over there. So you guys are night owls. And Pat, good to see you as well. So maybe I'm not alone with this subject called spiritual testing. It seems that a lot of us on the spiritual path have various aspects of this happening in our life, sometimes more than other times. There are very often ups and downs that happen throughout our life. Those that are on the spiritual path become aware that there is a connectivity of the spiritual path and the ups and downs in our life. And this awareness has to do with an awakening, an awakening that life doesn't happen accidentally, that it is an interactive game, if you will. It's something that we have to be a part of. It starts with responsibility. The responsibility is directly related to this subject of recognizing that we operate in a world of both manifestation in which we bring forth that which in front of us, but we are also manifested our set of conditions via our karma. Our karma is not just ours, it's ours and our ancestors. And it comes to us, you know, at birth. It, it literally creates the playing field in front of us. It creates the conditions in which this person is our mother, this person is our father, this is going to be our brothers and sisters, this will be our best friend. These will be the people that we'll encounter, the major players. The karma brings those to us so that we can have conditions revealed throughout the course of our life that set the stage for our greatest soul learning. So there's a very interconnected aspect to the entirety of life. And sh surely the masses of people walking through this life are completely oblivious to that. They just think that when something unpleasant happens that, you know, it was just bad luck. They, they do not start with the first step, which is responsibility. So responsibility means awareness, awakeness, awareness to the interconnectedness of everything that's happening in our life. So we've had some few more people join in. Welcome, Kathy. Welcome, uh, Shaker. Welcome, 
Yvonne, and Nicole, and Magdalene. The subject today is passing spiritual testing. And when we first start with acknowledgement that we are in a big game, we are in a um, personal game, and there are other players, but we have to be personally responsible. A lot of us move through life, we play the victim or we play the victimizer role. Both roles allow us to operate in life in the best way as possible. The victim role is a role in which somebody always picks on us, always hurts us, woe is me, we blame them, we put the responsibility outside of us. That is not taking responsibility. So you want to see if you fit into that, um, that name, if you will. It's not, a, it's not a judgment. It's an observation. Do you fit in that place where it's other people's fault, it's not yours? This is a lack of responsibility. This is saying, I have no idea why these things are happening to me. Okay? That's the opposite of movement towards passing a spiritual test. You don't want to go down that road. So victimizer is also a role. And the victimizer is not necessarily the bad person. It's not the abuser necessarily. The victimizer role is very often played by the person that uh, is also the victim. They play both sides. So an example of uh, acting out in the victimizer role is um, a good example is, uh, let's say that you're in a relationship already and um, you accuse the, uh, the other person that's with you of doing something or you make a set of rules that puts pressure on them that they can or cannot do certain things. If you look underneath that, the reason behind that is, is protection for yourself so that you don't get hurt because if they do those things, then you get hurt. So to avoid getting hurt, you place these, these rules upon others. So we do these things to protect ourselves. Now, both of those root from the beginning of life. The, the, the beginning of life is our karma brought forth the conditions that have created the playing field that we are walking in. Some of us on watching us today are 20, some 25, some 30, 45, 50, 60, some 70. And throughout the course of the age of our life, we, uh, we create an ego, we create a personality. The personality is as a direct result of our karmic conditions. So if we have an abusive uh, father and a mother that is not defensive of you, then that causes us to create a certain ego or personality way of being in life. And then we bring ourselves to the rest of our life with some of these roots. If we have a beautiful mother and a beautiful father and they teach us about love and compassion, that creates the roots of the way we bring ourselves to life. These are all aspects of what creates um, suffering in our life. These are all aspects of what creates lessons, experiences, those things that happen to us or happen in our life. They have the roots all the way back to the beginning. And it's important to wake up to this. Once we wake up, it's an, it's an opportunity to take responsibility. Ah. For example, I was, I was having a conversation today with one of my soulmate clients and I was working with them more on life coaching than soulmate. But the example applies and that is that she wanted to um, work through a problem that was coming up in her particular uh, perspective and she revealed that she still had a great deal of animosity towards her mother and her father through a lot of our sessions. <clears throat> I'm not a psychologist. I don't have a, I don't have, I have one semester in psychology. Okay. Uh, so, but I understand human nature. One of the things I said to her is I said, Bonnie, you have to take a look at how this is holding you back. You're not taking responsibility. You, the entirety of our life and every quote unpleasant thing that happens to us, including what happens to you last week, including that flat tire, including that, that recent breakup, including that um, uh, whatever you want to see as unpleasant or out of your control, trust me, it was within your control. It was something that had a purpose and significance. Now, it doesn't always mean it, it's... Um, it doesn't always mean it's a negative. It very often means it's a positive. It has to do with perspective. We loop it right back around to responsibility. So I said to Bonnie, uh, and that's, I'm just making up that name, by the way. Um, 
you know, protect the innocent. I said to Bonnie, um, Bonnie, you, 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 if you look at how you write these, these, these questions I give you, you're not writing them from a perspective of the awareness that has been taught you, which is everything that has happened in our life, we have done upon others. When I say happen, meaning happen negative, we have done upon others. So um, if you have been abused, guess, guess what? You have been the abuser and so forth. So what's my point? When we stop and take responsibility, we can then turn the tide on it. We can then look at it from a completely different perspective and stop getting beat up because the other side is manifestation. When we were created, we were created in the likeness of the divine. We were created uh, to have the ability to bring forth to us those things that will bring us to the highest place that we can be, the closest to the heart of the divine. We came from the heart of the divine and we are returning there. And we came in with a few basic tenets, free will, um, and you are built in the likeness of the divine, meaning we are all miniature manifestors in our own right. Some of the manifestations happens automatically via our karma, and half of it happens because of our positioning. Are we responsible or are we completely the victim and out of responsibility? When we take a look at life that's happening around us and that current moment where you're stuck in, where you're just, I can't believe I can't, you know, uh, get that job. I can't believe whatever it is you're rattling the cage with. Stop. The cage is being rattled and you're in that moment because it was created from behind you. It was created back there years ago, potentially at the beginning of life, but at the very least a year or a few months ago. That's the manifestation aspect. It has been created in front of you because you have not been paying attention. Potentially, maybe you are. Um, and so when a test comes, when a spiritual test comes, almost always it will come in the area of our weakest point. Mine comes in the area of, of anger. So, uh, and it usually nabs me really fast. It's just, you know, uh, I, I'm just, I'm in it. And I have to, and, and sometimes I trip over myself in it. And it usually takes me, you know, sometimes 30 seconds to a minute before I grab myself and pull myself back out of it. Um, so everyone's got their little grab. Now, for those that have children, it's very often the children that push our buttons that are the spiritual testing. There is no limit to spiritual testing and how it shows up. Really, it can show up while we're driving. It can show up with the kids. It can show up making food. It can show up while we're in meditation. Spiritual testing will show up wherever the weak point is. And what it is, is it's heaven's love. I want you to just sit with that for a minute. Spiritual testing is heaven's love for you. That's, a, that's not an easy one to swallow when we are suffering, right? We're in the middle of whatever it is. I see Nicole saying, mind's in relationship and love. We all have ours. And so how can we say it's heaven's love for us? You know, we just want to curse and say, damn it, it's, you know, it sucks. If heaven loves me this way, I don't want it, right? But what do I mean when I say that? Heaven is assisting us to clear the blockages so that we can move through and past and into a higher level. How do they do that? They bring it to us so that we can see it with awareness, so that we can transform it with the tools that you have been empowered with ever since you started following Dr. and Master Shah's wisdom and hopefully before that, but the tools that he empowers us with is love and forgiveness. And a lot of us don't want to go down that road. Well, no, why should I forgive them? Why should I give them love? They did this and they did that. Sometimes it's, you know, not even loving ourselves, forgiving ourselves. We don't know how to do it. But love and forgiveness is the answer. And it starts again with the awareness. So when we're in that place of suffering, it's deeply important to stop and go, okay, this moment was not created two seconds ago. It was not created two minutes ago or even an hour ago. This moment was created way before I got here. It was created by my karma and it was created by my uh, consistency of my thoughts and belief systems. 
this is key guys the moment you're in this spiritual testing moment whatever it is was created by the predominancy of your thoughts your ego your personality and your karma collectively your unconscious and your conscious came together put forth this manifestation in front of you God is in there offering his part giving us these teachings his wisdom these blessings in the form of uh, giving us heavens teams guides angels and saints they're over here nudging us I gave somebody a visual once I say you know your heavens teams are very much like the bumpers and when you when you go to the bowling alley you know how they put those little rubber tubes down the aisles and your kid rolls the bowling ball and it hits one side and hits the other side but it eventually hits the pins okay that's who your heavens teams are that's who your soul is in this life they're there to nudge you this way and nudge you that way if we pay attention to the nudge there's not a lot of pain it's when we ignore the nudge where the pain comes in how many of you are ignoring the nudges how many of you are refusing to step up to the plate and go hmm maybe this person isn't really the person I should be with hmm maybe I should go ahead and just figure out how to make this job better because the boss and the co-workers just don't like me and it can't possibly be my fault maybe it is responsibility you know these kind of conditions do not happen automatically guys heaven your karma and your pre-existing conditions that led up to that have brought that to you so if it's for example co-workers and the boss take responsibility that means you were the unpleasant boss and you were the unpleasant co-worker very simple then you employ employ what you have learned you employ love you employ forgiveness if that boss has lied to you passed you up for uh, upliftments etc etc what do you think you're going to ask for forgiveness for it's simple to the soul of everybody that I've ever been the superior the boss of if I have ever passed you up for raises uplifting done favoritism for other people in my family I've learned my lessons it's happened to me a lot I deeply apologize you can apply this you just take a look at wherever your suffering is flip the coin so many times you've heard this wisdom but I'm trying to bring it in relationship to understanding spiritual testing because spiritual testing is about moving through and past a mindset that is not serving us an attitude or a belief that is not serving us an ego blockage that is not serving us spiritual testing is moving us through and past things that are not moving forward our heart our soul everything towards love so the easiest way to pass the spiritual testing is to start with the awareness just be aware of it okay I'm not enjoying this moment whatever it is this must be spiritual testing and I remember what Master Paul reminded me that this wasn't created just two minutes ago this is created as a result of my karmic implications conscious and unconscious conditions in which I've allowed to land in front of me and now I'm suffering with it so I am going to work with forgiveness and love to minimize the current grab that it has on me so that I can position myself to look at it differently moving forward so that I don't have more of what I'm not wanting moving forward because if you focus on what's in front of you then that's what you're gonna get more of if you release it with love and forgiveness then that's what you're gonna get more of so it does start like that with this awareness spiritual uh, testing is God's love it's heaven's love because they know that once you get it once you pass the test with love and forgiveness and awareness the chances of you making that same mistake again is diminished at the very least you'll see it next time it pops up and you say aha I see you not gonna play that game again not gonna go down that road again many of the of the of those in my um, and my soulmate program are are female and they often find themselves in a relationship where they know they probably shouldn't be there but the reason they're there is because their own self-worth is minimized they don't believe that they can have another guy well he has this and this and good habit but I'll live with that because these things are good 
but you're denying what you know is highest and best for you. So you suffer. You suffer in that relationship. And you stay, but you know you should leave. But you stay, but you know you should leave. And so that is a form of a spiritual test because you're not loving yourself. The highest love is self-love and divine love. When you try to fulfill that self-love, divine love from outside you, you know, it, it will just continue to not succeed. It will not fulfill you in the highest and best ways. So the soulmate attraction system helps you to unwind all that and create a different life for you. It's just a good a physical representative world example of, uh, of heaven giving us their love so that we can move through and past that. Now, one of the things that Dr. and Master Shah has done is he has given us some exceptional tools to change these things. He has brought to all of his books He's transmitted downloads in each of the books. You just put a book on your heart. You don't even have to read it. Just put it on your heart and it will help you to transform. We have songs. We have music. We have soul dancing. We have soul movement. There's so many different things that we can employ. But what I want you to hear now is why do we employ them? Why do we bring these uh, instruments to us? Why do we grab a book when we're suffering? Why do we uh, uh, play music when we're suffering? Why do we ask Shah's Golden Healing Ball or Love, Peace, Harmony, Rainbow, Light Ball to come? It's not just a panacea. It's not just a, a lifeline. It's important to recognize why it works. It works because it's divine love brought into a physical form into a physical manifestation divine we think is outside of us but divine is in us of us around us we breathe divine it is never any farther away than just this moment but we in this physical world need physical world things that we can grab onto we need something tangible so divine power has been put into the books divine power has been put into the songs divine power has been put into things like the rainbow light ball love peace harmony light ball etc and when we bring those into our uh, physical world where we're in the middle of that physical suffering the reason it has such a profound effect on us is because it doesn't operate on our physical world frequency. It, it, it is not here. We are here. We're in the suffering zone when we really don't need to be. We can move through and out of suffering with consistent awareness, with consistent seeing that thing that we have labeled and judged as unpleasant, that person, that condition, that boss, that that financial condition that you just can't seem to dig yourself out of, whatever those things are that show up consistently in our life, we can um, dig our own, I should say, fill in that hole that we have dug and step out of it. Because you can't fall in a hole once you fill it back in, right? And so how do we fill in that hole? We fill it in with love. We fill it in with forgiveness. We fill it in with the divine treasures. We fill it in with awareness and responsibility. So spiritual testing is anything that creates suffering in our life. Passing spiritual testing is responsibility, bringing forth and practicing that which we have. So now we're actually going to do a practice and we're going to transform some of the spiritual testing. Now we're going to release the blockages. That are present in your life today. And what I'm going to do is everything that you can do on your own. The nice part about this is you can do it when you are, you know, walking up the stairwell to get your exercise on the way to the top. You can do this when you're out walking the dog. You can do this anytime because we can always make things lighter. What we fail to understand is the moment when that spiritual testing comes, when that thing hits us over the head, the moment that comes, is, is a little too late, so to speak. Of course, you have to address it in that moment, given the skill set we're working with now. But have you ever heard an ounce of prevention is worth everything? I don't even know the exact verbiage. What are they saying? You know, Eastern medicine says very clearly, prevent health issues before they happen. Same thing with this. Do uh, the practices in advance of a spiritual test coming to you and at the very least it'll be dramatically diminished and so it's one of those things also that we can teach our loved ones we can teach those that are close to us you know they might be going through a spiritual test and we 
we know how they are. You know, maybe it's a husband, spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. We know that when they're going through that test, that they're going to be grumpy for who knows how long. So we can um, probably not want to address them. <laughs> probably do want, don't want to address them right at that moment because they're stuck in their ego, they're suffering, they're not going to probably respond that well. Best thing you can do at that point is just invite their soul and do forgiveness practice with their soul, uh, teach their soul to, to walk through forgiveness, chant uh, love, peace, harmony with their soul. Then after they come back down off it, you can teach them what you have learned here. And they might not, they might just say, ah, oh, that's woo-woo stuff. Okay, that's very possible. You know, sometimes our spouses aren't as advanced as we are. But um, it doesn't mean you didn't plant the seed, okay? And it doesn't mean that the next time something happens that they might not try it when you're not watching. And so if we just plant the seed but don't have attachment to the people that we care about um, using it, then we can slowly just give them a little bit more food, a little bit more water, the seed will grow, uh, and you can be the best example. They can see, you know, I remember when you used to get really upset about that. How come you're not getting upset anymore? Oh, remember when I told you this and this and da 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 da? Yeah, I've been employing that. It works very well. Now they see you being the example. Okay, what do you think they're going to do next time they have? So this is something you can you can work with with everybody you care about. Okay, so let's do a practice together. Again, this is something you can and should do on your own, and it's reproducible. All right, so we sit up straight. <clears throat> Just relax your, your hands uh, one over the other. Close your eyes. I might keep mine open because um, it's correct to keep my eyes open as the person speaking, but you close yours. Take a deep breath in. Bring your thoughts and your breath into your lower abdomen. We're going to start with a forgiveness practice. We're going to ask forgiveness for all those souls that we have been blaming. Okay? So repeat after me. Dear Divine, dear Tao, dear Source, dear all souls, my name is, state your name. I wish to deeply and sincerely apologize for playing the role of victim in this life and in all of my lives, for blaming you, for putting responsibility outside of me. I recognize now that I continue to suffer in the same places again and again because I have not become responsible yet for my karma, for my thoughts, words, and actions. I ask your forgiveness, and I ask that you bless me to pass my spiritual testing, to awaken, to take responsibility, and to see those times when I can shift the automatic reactions that I have to ones of awareness, love, and forgiveness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue to repeat. Dear my own soul, I love you. Please forgive me for all the lifetimes of suffering that I have caused us by my lack of attunement to you, by my lack of listening to your guidance. Please forgive me for choosing self-protection mechanisms instead of trusting that love will be given to me by my beloved Creator. And now we will invite the outer souls to join us to serve our request for passing spiritual testing. So please repeat after me. Dear all layers of the Divine, the Tao, the Source, dear beloved Kuan Yin and Mother Mary, dear beloved Jesus, dear beloved Buddha, dear all beings of light, 
serving the light side, including all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, angels, healing angels, archangels, lamas, sifus, gurus, saints, masters, and ascendant masters, heavens, animals, and more. I love you, I love you, I love you, and I thank you for your presence. Could you please come to me? Bless me to pass my spiritual testing. And at this time, choose the greatest area of testing that you are going through. Tell heaven, please help me to pass testing in this area. I am very, very grateful. Thank you. Now we're going to do another forgiveness practice specific to your area. So if you chose romance, then you want to do a forgiveness practice for the times you have caused the same kind of romantic suffering you are in the experiencing side of. If you chose financial blockages, you want to ask for forgiveness for causing those kinds of financial blockages. You see the pattern? So figure out your area of request and then contemplate your forgiveness for that area. Repeat, dear all souls, if I or my ancestors have caused great suffering to you in this or any lifetime, in the area of, and fill in the blank, I deeply and sincerely, sincerely, sincerely apologize. I have had great suffering in this life, in this area. It has been very, very unpleasant. I wish you to know that if you had this kind of suffering as a result of my thoughts, words, or actions, I truly can never apologize enough. I would never wish this kind of suffering upon anybody, but I know that I may have done this at a previous time that I cannot remember. And I am so sorry. I ask sincerely for your unconditional forgiveness. To all of the souls in this and all lifetimes that have brought this suffering to me, think about the suffering you are on the experiencing end of. All those souls, the ones you have been blaming, think about them. I wish to offer you my unconditional forgiveness. I now recognize I might have brought this suffering to you first. I might have harmed you the exact same way in a different time that I cannot remember. And I have been blaming you this lifetime when in fact I might have harmed you first. I apologize and I wish to offer you, all of you, my unconditional forgiveness. I have learned my lessons and I release you of any karmic debt you have to me. We're going to ask the soul of divine love to serve us. So repeat after me. Dear the soul of the divine's love, can you please come from God's heart and sit in my heart center? Bless me to pass the spiritual testing to shift my perspective and to transform my life to be far better than it currently is. I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And with your eyes closed, visualize the divine's heart and your heart melding as one greatest love from God's heart and your heart are becoming one. Remember, God is in you. God is everywhere. So let us chant. 
divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. I ask my highest treasures for divine love to turn on, subdivide, go to everybody watching, offer your highest divine love as appropriate. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine Continue to feel God's love, feel the love for all of the souls that brought you these lessons. Feel love for them. They give you the opportunity to permanently release this now forever. Divine love, divine love, divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. And now let us offer our greatest forgiveness to all those souls that have given us these lessons in this life. We have blamed them, but let us offer them our greatest love, our greatest forgiveness. Repeat with me. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness they're my highest forgiveness treasures please turn on please subdivide go to all of the souls that are watching right now bless them with your highest forgiveness as appropriate divine forgiveness divine forgiveness Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. I forgive you, you forgive me. Bring love, peace, and harmony. I forgive you, please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive you, please forgive me, bring love, peace, harmony, bring love, peace, harmony, I forgive you. Please forgive me, bring love, peace, harmony, bring love, peace, harmony. Now with your eyes continue to be closed, I want you to visualize all the souls that have brought harm to you in this life those that have slandered you, those that might have cost you money, those that have harmed you physically, see them come to you. 
now. Remember, you have God's love emanating from your heart. You are God's love in the physical form. These souls have reminded you that you may have brought harm to them first. They have brought you a form of spiritual testing that you can purify and release. They have brought you the opportunity to completely release any karma that you might have with them. You may have been blaming them, holding them responsible for the different suffering in your life. It is time to let them go with true and unconditional forgiveness. Tell them that you are deeply sorry that you might have caused the suffering to them that you have been on the receiving side of. Tell them that you cannot imagine having done that to them. But if you did, you can truly understand how much suffering they may have experienced. And say, I forgive you. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Please forgive me. They are crying. They are bowing down to you because they know that without your forgiveness, the karmic cycle will continue. And you are so grateful to finally be free of this at the very purest levels. I forgive you. Please forgive me. Give them a hug. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. I forgive you, please forgive me, bring love, peace, harmony, bring love, peace, harmony. And now feel the Divine's love. All there is around you is white light, all the other souls have left. There is just pure white light, and in the middle, in you, is this incredible bright red Divine's loving heart, right in the center of your body. God's love is your love. Massage and heal yourself. Vibrate God's love throughout the cellular structure that makes up your body. Every cell is changing to perfect little hearts. Every thought that you've ever had about yourself that was unloving is changing to love. Every perspective you have ever held about blaming others is changing to love. Every thought, every belief, everything is changing to the purity of the Divine's love. It is easy because that is what you are originally and you are just remembering. You are just remembering the Divine's pure love for you. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Let us offer our gratitude. Thank you, Divine. Thank you, Tao, Source. Thank you, all of the light beings that came. Thank you to the incredible souls that have accepted and offered their forgiveness, that have released me of any karmic debt that I have with them. Thank you for the opportunity to receive my request for forgiveness. And thank you for accepting my request for forgiveness. Thank you to my own soul for your love and your guidance. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So please share, how was that experience for you? Did you have any tears? Did you have any aha moments? 
did you have that good cathartic release that you were hoping to have around that that one area that has been bothering you for a long time this is something that anybody can do anytime it just requires a desire to not go down the old way of doing things it starts with awareness we move into responsibility this moment did not happen just now from just a few minutes ago it didn't just happen accidentally this moment has been in the works for a while the predecessor was my karma the predecessor was my thoughts words and actions that have put forth this manifested moment in front of me and now I see it thank you why go down the path that we have been of putting responsibility outside of us and just having more of what has not been working for us has it worked in the past do you really want to duplicate what's not working what's the what's the uh, um, uh, what's the definition of insanity doing the same things we've always done and expecting a different result so why would we want to continue to do what's not been working by taking responsibility when those things come up now sometimes it might take you five minutes into it before you go ah oh, I'm in this drag yourself out of it if you're in a physical location put yourself in a different physical location if you're busy yelling at your kid and you're right in the middle of it just stop and walk away and go out and smell literally smell some flowers do whatever it takes to stop and then step into this practice ask for forgiveness for whatever you are on the suffering side of go through these steps they are duplicatable they are repeatable they are something that you can apply the remainder of your life with the greatest success and you know what's going to happen when you do it consistently your life is going to elevate 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 your frequency is going to go up 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 your soul journey will dramatically improve there is not one aspect of your life that won't get better it just it's almost not possible that your life won't get better 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 now one thing to keep in mind this is a very important statement guys so listen carefully the way to the top of the mountain includes valleys the valleys are the tests Oh, things are getting really good. Oh, things are better, better, better. That's when you do this the most. That's when you smile and you say, thank you, God, because this tells me that you trust that I have enough power to move through the next layer of testing because your love is so high for me. I know you're there for me. You repeat the love. You repeat the forgiveness. You go through and out it. And that valley, by the way, was much higher than the previous valley. So the valley peak, higher valley than before, higher peak than before. And you keep doing that. It's on the way to the top. So know that the valleys will come. But know that they're surmountable just like the previous ones. And each time you work through that valley, you are far, far greater ahead in life than you were just two days before. So I'm going to read some of the comments. Um, Tawana says she felt crying and felt chills huge soul releases great soul releases heart opening beautiful Alicia says thank you master uh, Paul such a beautiful meditation you're welcome Alicia Chelsea says profound peace thank you thank you thank you thank you divine thank you master Paul leaking eyes and then Esther says crying very releasing yes Eleanor tears warmth all over and a definite aha moment thank you master Paul you're very welcome Eleanor amazing video warmth up and down my arms was in prayer yes we should remember these tests yeah this is a great way to end our week you know the the spiritual testing it, it won't stop why because God wants us to return to his heart and we can't as long as we're doing thoughts words and actions that are out of alignment with the purest love and so we will always receive opportunities to um, elevate our awareness opportunities to elevate our enlightenment because enlightenment is that it's lightening up about the situation there are some of the higher masters they just laugh when, when anything happens they just laugh because they see it as their karma as an opportunity to move through it we're not there 
we, we could be five minutes, ten minutes, one hour into the suffering before the light comes on. But when it does, back out of it and do the practice. And if you are consistent, you will absolutely reach that same level of enlightenment as any master does. I tell you, it's very easy to go sit on a mountain somewhere and become an enlightened master. It's dang hard to do it when you're sitting in the middle of life getting beat up from left and right. But these, this is why Master Shah said very clearly, the saints in heaven, they, their soul standing goes up very, very, very slowly, very slowly. They sit and meditate and pray, but their soul standing very slow. You come to earth one time, you do this work, you jump way higher than what they have been doing up there. Why? Because it's hard. Okay? But if we address it with these awarenesses, it becomes easier, easier, easier. Okay? So it's been my greatest honor to share with you this most important teaching on how to pass your spiritual testing. I am confident that it has served you based on the responses. Master Shah will be in uh, the San Francisco area, north of that in the wine country, for the next 10 or so days, starting next week. And so I will be there with him. Um, I've had to vacillate on, and I'm going to be doing live stream, is it possible? Um, I've decided that I'm going to be fully present to the retreat. Okay. So I can be even more powerful when I return to serve you that much better. So uh, my return date is the 18th. Uh, so I will start on the 19th. Of course, you'll see the notices on the, uh, on the live streams and the Facebook quotes and everything. I want to offer my deepest gratitude to Kristen uh, Rojas and Monica. They have been my rock. They have been uh, sharing the videos in all these different groups. It has allowed new people to come and to, to be awakened to the wisdoms of Dr. and Master Shah. I take zero credit, none of it. I bow my head to Master Shah, to God, Tao, and Source. I'm just a messenger. I don't even have a message, message without Dr. Master Shah. Every message I deliver, he taught me. So we always give our credit to the Father. And um, so please, if you're new, learn more about Dr. and Master Shah, drsha.com. Um, I'm going to go to the retreat and just have an awesome time. I'll probably come back feeling about five pounds lighter. I might even look lighter, even though we typically sleep about four hours every night. It's kind of funny. Sleep four hours every night, come back, look 10 years younger. I guess that's a real retreat. So love you, love you, love you. Thank you for all your beautiful comments and sharing. Please hit the share button afterwards. If you're new, please hit the uh, subscribe button so you'll know when I come live. And uh, make sure you share in some of your groups if you belong to groups. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. See you when I come back from the retreat.